Hello, my fancy friends. It's so good to see you here today. Today, I'm gonna to take you through step-by-step -step process of how to create this tiny little tea set here. This was a silver plated tea set that we have now covered in color and I love it so much and I cannot wait to show you exactly how to create your own. Okay, so the very first color of paint that we're gonna lay down is salt water. This is the Silk Paint by Dixie Bell Paint Company. I'm gonna use this as my base coat. Now let me start, let me move back a little bit and let you know that these were silver plated pieces. This was a teapot, a creamer, and a sugar bowl along with a the tray. They were silver plated and I've already covered them in slick stick. Slick Stick is a product also by Dixie Bell that allows you to paint on really slick surfaces such as metal, glass, uh, formica, tile, um, things like that. Teapot sets, <laughs> tea sets. So I've already coated the entire thing in two coats of Slick Stick. I just followed the instructions that are on the back of the jar and those have um, completely cured and I'm now laying on my first coat of paint. So I chose salt water, which is a silk paint color and I use that because it has a really really smooth finish and it does not finish with a chalky feel it finishes more of a matte eggshell feel and it's a really easy paint to do detail work on top of and I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of stripes and checks on these on this set so I felt like it would serve best as my base coat so I'm covering the entire thing in salt water silk paint Okay, so I have actually drawn this out. Do you see my little sketch there? And I'm gonna start with the little creamer pot. I don't usually sketch out my projects, but every once in a while when I know that I'm gonna be using a lot of colors on a bunch of individual pieces and I want to make them look cohesive like a set, I feel like I need to draw out my patterns and kind of lay out a color plan. And then you'll see me work in that color plan. So um, again, I am basing all of the pieces in salt water before I start to introduce the very first color, which I believe will be yellow. And here we go, we've got Daisy, which is the uh, yellow that I'm using here by Dixie Bell. I'm using just a one inch flat brush and I am covering the inside of this tray with a coat of Daisy. The, the paint has really, really good coverage. This is from the Chalk Mineral Paint line, not the Silk line. And um, just one coat coverage is all you really need on this set, especially since you already have two coats of primer and the slick stick and one coat of white paint, just a good wash of yellow. You may want to keep your water bottle near you, a spray bottle, it just helps you sort of spritz your surface and the paint will spread around a lot easier. You can see me spray there um, with the spritzer first. I just sort of sprayed a little tiny bit of water over the spout or the spigot of this teapot so that when I go to paint, the, the paint moves around with the brush almost like a watercolor. It makes it super easy to use when you're working with details. So when I mentioned that I work in color blocks, what I mean by that is while I have my yellow paint open and while I've got yellow paint on my brush, I try to, to go ahead and paint yellow wherever I'm going to need yellow. So I've already done the tray. I knew that I was going to do certain areas of this teapot with yellow, so I'm doing that as well and I will continue to lay down yellow anywhere that I've already planned out before I move on to my next color. Just like the little sugar bowl here, I knew that I was gonna um, use yellow along the base of this little pot. So I went ahead and laid down yellow all around the legs and the handles uh, because the legs and the handles are going to be in a different color. All right, so I'm ready to move on to my next color block section, which will be pinks. Um, but I don't, I can't do the pink until I've drawn out my stripes or my checks. A lot of the pink will be the detail. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those out now. So what I'm doing is I'm using a ruler. You can do this freehand as well. You can use tape if you want. Um, I'm just using a ruler to draw out or measure out my stripes or my checks around my tray. You just want to be sure that you um, space them relatively uh, the same so that they look the same size all the way around and here in just a second We're going to count them as well So you see me starting with square number one and I'm counting all the way around the edge of the tray Just to make sure that I ended up with an even number. Yes, I did I've got an even number of squares because if we're gonna do a pink square and then a white square We want to make sure that we have pink and white 
that ends in a pink and white pattern all the way around. So what I'm doing here is when you have a little raised edge like this or any, you know, draw out your stripes first and then do the little difficult over the lip edge all at once at the end. Draw your simple stripe and then come back with that little over the edge. So, oh, this pink is gorgeous, isn't it? This is the, um, also one of the silk colors. This is called Prickly Pear. Now, I could have used Peony out of the Chalk Mineral Paint line, but Prickly Pear is just a little bit more bold than Peony. It's got a little more oomph to it. I love Prickly Pear. I use it a lot. In fact, I need to order some more because I'm almost out. So, I am just using um, a half inch flat brush here, and I'm doing that raised area first and then I will go back in and fill in the squares so that I've got my pink and white squares. And then I'm gonna do something a little bit different here in just a second. Okay, so while we let the tray checks dry, um, I'm ready to move on to the pink that will be on the teapot but I don't have my stripes drawn out yet and I did not pre-draw them. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. So I've got my pencil and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm dividing the teapot into four sections. So I drew a line um, straight down where the handle is, then I spun it around and I drew it straight down where the spigot is and then I uh, you know, halved it in half. So I made it in quarters and then I divided the quarters in half again. Um, so I drew a straight, it doesn't matter if you wanna how, do it in quarters, do us anything that's in a circle, divide it into four parts. And then you can divide each individual part into one, two, or three more sections. It's up to you as long as you do that same exact thing to every quartered part so that it ends up even. So that when you take your pattern around the circle, like a pink and white stripe or a pink and white check, you end up with an even number all the way around. Here you go, let me give you an up close look at how those stripes are. So now I am going to start the horizontal stripes that I'm gonna do around the bottom of the pot. So I just traced out a circle that was already there in the metal itself. It was sort of embossed and I'm just dividing that into even numbers. You can just see I'm sort of guesstimating there and then I'm just sort of following it freehand wise in a circular pattern up around, I think I did three additional stripes above that. I'm just gonna keep spinning that around until I had stripe. Okay, so this is me drawing out the horizontal lines from the stripes that I did. I sort of skip over each line and I continue to draw a horizontal line and then I go back in and I fill in the ones that I skipped. That keeps me from getting too far off of my horizontal level line. And how about that Lazy Susan? You like working with that Lazy Susan? <laughs> so now we're moving on to the pink checks. I'm using, again, just a one inch, no, I'm sorry, this is a half inch square brush. And I'm just filling these in one square at a time. This is my favorite part. I absolutely love doing checks. If you have been around long enough, you know that I love doing this. I can really lose myself in this process. I call it my therapy. Um, sometimes I get a little crazy when I've been doing this for too long and I have to make myself step away um, and give my eyes a break. But I, I will paint checks until my old hands and fingers just can't do it anymore. I love it. And listen, I know a lot of you say, oh my gosh, your hand is so steady. My hand's not steady, I can never do that. This is what I want you to look at. I want you to go look at the most recent McKenzie's Child that's come, McKenzie Child's pieces that have come out. They are in a gray check. Zoom in on those pieces, get the magazine, look at it closely. They are not crisp lines like this. They're not on purpose. They're a very, very homemade, hand-painted look. So embrace your not straight lines, embrace your not steady hand, and just keep painting whatever your heart wants to paint. Okay, since we were, since we have pink paint on our brush and our pink jar is open, I'm moving on to do this lid I drew out. Um, I divided that circle into quarters and then divided that again, just like I told you, and I'm filling those in with the same pink on the lid for the little sugar bowl. So while those pinks are drying, we are gonna move on to our circles on the tray. This is a spinning 
action that I do with a half inch brush. If you wanna use a one inch brush, you'll have much larger dots. Just dip your paint, don't put too much paint on there, and hold your brush in one spot and then just spin it. And you wind up with a perfect circle every single time. This trick is so much fun to do and I do hope that you will try it. I just sort of eyeball the spacing between the circles and I decide if I need to squeeze one in here or there. I don't have a pattern laid out specifically or a certain number that I plan to use. I just sort of eyeball it and decide where they're needed. Finishing up this last stripe, let's stand her up and see how she's looking. There we go. Isn't this cute? She's really coming to life. Okay, so you may have noticed on the teapot, I introduced some light pink into the checks. I did that Mackenzie Child drag look. So I decided I wanna go ahead and do that on anything that's pink. So I'm doing it here as well on the little pink triangles on top of the sugar bowl, just dipping my brush into, actually it's not light pink, I did it with, with uh, fluff. So I'm just dipping my brush into a little bit of fluff and adding that to the pink. It just gives it kind of a, I think they call it a drag. The good thing about it is if you have too much light color on it and you feel like it's too much, you can just re-dip your brush in the dark pink and go back over your drag and sort of tone down your drag a little bit. So you get to decide, it's just paint. Introducing Lucky Lavender, this is Lucky Lavender. It is the light purple in the purple line of Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint as well. So I am just hand painting these stripes, just filling in. I'm now using an angled brush. Um, an angled brush versus a flat brush, really you can turn those points or those edges of the angle and get yourself a really sharp line when you're butting up against another color. So that's why I switched brushes here to the angle brush. You can see me just dragging just that point against that line. Bringing in our next color. I totally thought I would be doing this next color in the Gulf, which is my favorite light blue green aqua color. But instead I went with Dixie Belle Blue because the Jordan almonds tend to go very, very baby blue and Dixie Belle Blue is the closest that I've got to that. I love this color combination, all of these colors together. So I chose to do the legs on, I think I'm gonna do all of the legs on all three pieces in this Dixie Belle Blue. Now I know that I told you I color block and I did the lime already and I had lime on my brush, but I wasn't sure where I wanted to bring in the blue. I thought I might change up my my uh, colors from my sketch a little bit, but I do like what I did. So I went ahead to go went ahead and decided to go back with my lime and go back to the original plan. And I am now doing my stripes on the little creamer with the. Um, limeade and I will also be using the Lucky Lavender and now I'm finishing it up with some finishing gold touches. I went ahead and decided to bring in gold to this tea set as well so I'm using my Posh Chalk pigments and I believe this is Byzantine gold and mixed it with a little bit of my Dixie Belle gloss and putting it on the tip of my pot. Um, just any spare area on my pot that I thought needed a little bit of pizzazz which I also did it around the top edge of the pot as well. And last but not least, we need a top coat. This is Gator Hide. Gator Hide is by Dixie Belle. It's their toughest top coat that they have to offer. If they don't have this in stock, I will suggest their top coat in gloss to get this gorgeous, gorgeous clean shine. It also offers, um, Gator Hide offers protection from water and there you go, look at that. All four pieces are completely finished. They are all top coated in a single coat of Gator Hide for a beautiful sheen. They look cohesive. The metallic gold looks just amazing on it. I love this set so much, it makes me so very happy. Choose kindness, my friend. It's good for you. It's good for the person you're communicating with. I hope that you love this set as much as I do. Do not forget to subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. We have a new video up every single Sunday.